everyone. Welcome to our first episode of our new series, The 10 Minute Tastings. We decided to kick this off today because today is Pinot Grigio or Pinot Gris Day. Um, so with these, we're going to come at you weekly with just a few fun facts on different varietals, regions, and wines so that way we can help you grow in your wine palette and your wine knowledge. So today, in honor of Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio Day, that's the grape that we're going to focus on. Cheyenne's going to tell us a little bit about Pinot Gris in general to start. Yeah, so Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio is kind of first off thought as two different grapes, which they're not same exact thing. Um, secondly, they're kind of looked down upon in the wine world as something that is not necessarily as high class as a Chardonnay or a Sauvignon Blanc. However, it's actually a noble grape, so it does still have um, that going for it. <laughs> um, but it's also a very versatile grape, and there's so many different expressions. Um, of a Pinot Gris. Like you can have something that's very peary and apple-y or you can have something that's very crisp, but it's a very versatile wine and something that is definitely worth trying. Awesome. And I think everybody can see one thing right off the bat as we keep using the terms Pinot Grigio and Pinot Gris interchangeably. And <clears throat> that's for a good reason because they're the exact same grape as Cheyenne said. And the difference in the name actually just comes from the region. So Gris in French means gray, and this grape is a gray grape. It's actually a mutation of the Pinot Noir grape, so a black grape or a purple grape um, mutated to become gray, and so that's Pinot Gris, and in Italian, gray is Grigio. So we have basically just a language change for the exact same wine. And this wine, uh, the Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio, is actually the second most popular white wine behind everybody's favorite or non-favorite, which is? Chardonnay. Chardonnay, <laughs> right. People love to either love Chardonnay or love to hate Chardonnay. Um, and Chardonnay is, again, very similar to Pinot Grigio in that it has a wide range of expressions, and that's that's a good thing mm -hmm. um, because um, every, you know, Chardonnay is not the same in the same way that every Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio is not the same. So. Um, the, like, like we talked about, the, this grape, the Pinot Grigio, is a direct um, descendant or a mutation from the Pinot Noir grape, um, and it has a wide range of, of taste profiles depending on where it's made. It can be minerally and dry, it can be fruity and dry, um, or it can be fruity and sweet, and I think Pinot Grigio, I, I know a lot of our guests that come in um, that may be Pinot Grigio um, Fans are probably looking for more of a sweet expression of it. Uh, would you would you say that that's true? Because it's it's gotten that reputation as being a sweet wine. I would agree with that, and I think oftentimes on a wine menu in a restaurant, they tend to lean towards uh, the little bit sweeter mm -hmm. uh, Pinot Grigios. So great food friendly wines, which is part of the reason why, and also just um, kind of that American palate and what people are are used to and come to expect, but. There's a lot of differences, such as the Sylvan Ridge that we're tasting right now, um, which is not sweet at all. And we'll get back to kind of the regions in a little bit, but definitely does not have to be a sweet wine. Um, it can be very, very dry and, and very enjoyable for those of you that don't like sweet wines. Yeah, and it's interesting that, you know, some of the lower quality um, Pinot Grigios are geared toward the, the sweet um, type of wine. And that's not a bad thing. A low quality is kind of a a wine industry term um, doesn't mean they're bad wines. If you like it, um, it's good wine. Mm -hmm. um, but m what we would consider more of the, the high quality examples of Pinot Gris are really crisp, cr clean fruit flavors. They definitely are dry, um, fermented dry, um, and they have the, this lemon, lime, um, green apple, and a moderate acid level. So they're just really, really mouthwatering, delicious wines. And there's actually, there's actually some usefulness to knowing the difference between Pinot Gris, the French expression, and Pinot Grigio, um, because Pinot Gris is going to be more of a bolder, um, it, it's sometimes termed more of an oily, mouth-filling flavor, and the Italian style, Grigio, is going to be more of the fruit-forward, more acidic, clean, crisp. So, 
that helps you when you're looking for a particular style. Um, if you're if you like more of that bold kind of deeper, heavier flavor, then go with the Pinot Gris. And the interesting thing is, um, Oregon especially has really um, taken off and, and is running with Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio um, because it, the area is so similar to where it comes from in France. Um, but they will label it. The the maker will usually label it based on the style. So if it says Pinot Grigio. You can probably expect more of the bright, fruit-forward, um, you know, easy drinking. And if it says Pinot Gris, you can expect more of the, the Alsace or the French expression of it. So th there is some usefulness to understanding the terms and understanding where it comes from. Yeah, and what we have lined up here are some of the examples that we carry in the store. There's others as well. Um, the first three here are from Oregon, uh, all three from the Willamette Valley. Um, as Paul said, uh, very similar to the, the European counterparts, it's going to have that same um, crisp, uh, dry style. And then we have our Italian examples here. Uh, what we're drinking is the Sylvan Ridge yes. Pinot Gris. And so I'll just take a nice big sniff and see what we get in a drink. Definitely the tree fruits come through. Mm -hmm. the green apple pear. You get some, definitely on the nose, you get so much of that green apple. Yeah. yeah. I would say there's still some of that citrus though and maybe some like peach too, I mean, which mm -hmm. is, is what we're expecting from something like from the Alsace region as well. Well, this is beautiful. I, it's one of my favorite uh, Pinot Gris and white wines period that we have in the store. Uh, Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio are really versatile with foods, too. Yeah. Cheyenne, who is, loves to cook as well, can attest to this. Um, really anything, um, when you think of kind of that lighter fare, so salads, uh, chicken, uh, think of your Italian uh, pastas uh, with more of a white sauce, uh, seafood. Um, also going to be great with something that's maybe a little bit spicy, especially if you're on the Pinot Gris uh, end of that. Um, it'll help break through uh, some of that spice with the acidity. Um, ham and cheese, one of my favorite things uh, to make at home, nice and simple and easy. Um, so Cheyenne, what would be something that you would love to make with, with this expression, specifically the Sylvan Ridge? So, um, interestingly enough, I have been doing some research with uh, what exactly you should be making with wine. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of French foods are what you should make with French wine. Surprising. <laughs> wow, it's my idea. And so um, I really want to make this one recipe that I made, or that I have found of a Cornish egg hen. Mm -hmm. And it's packed with the herbs of Provence and a bunch of uh, butter, because the French love cooking with butter. And um, it, they serve it typically with uh, some spinach or asparagus, some type of fresh green. So I feel like that would go really well with this particular so I expression. I totally agree. This type of wine that has more of a, you know, a mouth-watering, uh, moderate acidic level is going to do so well with foods that are, you know, cream sauces or butter-based and absolutely will go with spiced foods as well as, you know, the Mediterranean spices as well as Asian food. Um, you just don't want to put a big heavy cab up with your Thai mm -hmm. food but this would be just spectacular uh, up against uh, any type of spiced food. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. The other thing that I think go it goes very well with is the sun. This is one of my favorite um, expressions of wine to drink, just sitting on the patio, a yeah. nice sunny evening, uh, watching that sunset when the, the temperature is warm, so it's, it's perfect for that. Absolutely. Well, in our next episode, Cheyenne maybe will be bringing us that game hen. Maybe, <laughs> who knows? Oh, I can almost smell it now. Well, thank you for joining us for our first 10-minute uh, tasting. We look forward to uh, chatting with you guys again in the future and, and continuing to educate you on the different wines that we have in the store and different wine varietals in the region. So thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.